The worst mass shooting in U.S. history, right? The Washington Post, CNBC, USA Today, they all ran the same headline calling the Las Vegas attack the deadliest ever. But was it? Well, it's tricky. If we're talking about only one person using only guns as weapons, then maybe they're right. But using that limited definition speaks volumes regarding the media's coverage, or lack thereof. Forgetting all the times white men killed people of color, which happened a lot. In the last hundred years or so, there have been several attacks by whites against black people in America, which dwarf the events of Las Vegas. Not to mention the countless thousands of Native Americans killed by American settlers. For example, in Arkansas in 1919, black laborers and sharecroppers, who mostly worked on cotton farms owned by whites, tried to form a union to make sure they were treated fairly and got the wages they were owed. The response was a mass lynching, which killed 237 blacks overnight. Two years later, a thriving black community in Tulsa, Oklahoma was completely destroyed by a mob of white men who bombed and burned down the neighborhood known as Black Wall Street. Around 300 black people in over 1,200 homes were destroyed in just two days. In both these instances, not a single white person was ever charged with a crime or put in jail. So why is it that almost all mainstream media have rushed to call Las Vegas the deadliest attack ever without even mentioning these other atrocities? Is this a case of the media whitewashing history or has the whitewashing already caused a collective amnesia? And is the white bias limited to just recounting history? Look at this, when the shooter is white, the issue revolves around mental health, even when the killer professes that race is the issue. Like in the case of Dylan Roof's shooting up of a black church in Charleston, South Carolina. Newsweek ran an opinion piece claiming mental illness is a common thread of these mass shootings. As if crazy is the reason and there's no other underlying issues. Don't peek behind the curtain, there's nothing back there really. When a white man kills a black man, we'll talk about the intimidating hoodie he was wearing or the puffy jacket that could have concealed a firearm. When George Zimmerman shoots and kills 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, the narrative focuses on the social issues that condition Zimmerman to fear the black team. Even the marijuana found in Martin's system when he was killed. Why is this even being discussed? And of course, God forbid if the killer is Muslim, then we have to have a national discussion about travel bans and Islam's violent ideology and homegrown extremism. I think Jeremy Scahill said it best in his Intercepted podcast when he had this question asked. What if these shootings that involve white men killing large groups of people, what if they were covered the way that stories involving shooters of other races are, are covered on a daily basis in this country? We are all familiar with the panels that discuss how rap music inspires black crime. But where are the panels discussing the mass killings by white people since 1919? What do you mean 1919? What about since colonialism?